show. Well, as you may have noticed now, um, I'm a girl, so I love to shop. And I like to, the feeling of going to the mall and trying things and trying shoes and looking at bags and all those things. But I also love the convenience of shopping online. I like to sit down there with my laptop and my coffee and just pick all the gifts that I want for Christmas, you know, for my family or for birthdays or anything like that. It's just so convenient that I just click something, put in my credit card information, and then sometime the post, uh, the mailman comes and brings me the stuff. It feels like Christmas every day, right? Well, but today I want to talk to you about the things that you have to consider whenever you are shopping, okay? Another thing that I want you to check is, it's about, we're, we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk a little bit about cloud computing, okay? So, let's get started. Yep, online shopping, I love that. Okay, so one thing that we have to keep in mind is that when we shop online, we actually must give our information, you know, our information, a lot of stuff. Of course, we need to give them our address because they are going to mail us the stuff, right? So there is two things. Payments should be convenient so that I feel like it's easy for me to, to pay when I am online. However, payments also need to be secure because I need to feel safe when I am shopping online. Okay. So the thing here is that because we have convenience and we have security and they are kind of ah, fighting is really, really hard for me or for anyone to find the blend, the perfect blend of something that is actually easy and convenient, but it's safe. OK, so for that, the um, businesses and uh, computer scientists are doing their part on trying to make everything safer. But you have to do yours. And I'm glad you're here because you're going to be getting, you get educated about what you should look for and how you have to act and do things uh, in order to protect your, your identity online. Okay, let's continue. So in online shopping, we have several kinds of, of models. We have a couple of models that I'm going to be talking about. We have the first one is uh, business to consumer. And this is when we, for example, buy something online, okay, but not necessarily only online. For example, if I'm buying from Amazon, I know that I cannot go to Amazon right here at Alamoana, right? I will have to actually shop online. However, I have Walmart.com, which is uh, brick and mortar, but I can also access their stuff online. Now, for these kind of stores where you have uh, the, the store that you can actually go in the shopping center or at the mall, and you can also access them online, they, have, they began offering certain services that are pretty awesome. For example, uh, I can go online and walmart.com and look for something and then I can search within you know, a, a few miles of my house and see if any of the Walmarts has that particular element, that particular item that I am looking for. And if that's the case, I can just uh, have it delivered and I can just pick it up in there. You know, in Bed Bath & Beyond and all those stores, they, they, they are, uh, actually let you do that. So it's pretty cool because you, you, can, you can have the item right up, but you don't have to go to the store and then get there and find out that they don't have what you need. So you can first do your research, find out if it's there, and then you go. So all of these things are making online kind of hybrid shopping very convenient. Okay, let's continue. So another thing that we have in here is that we have the consumer to consumer kind of model, okay? And in this we have, when we buy from other individuals, people like us, and there is two, um, two of them that I'm gonna show you. Today we're gonna talk about eBay, which you can go and buy, is like your personal online garage sale. But then you have the closest one, which is, which is Craigslist, right? Now, the good thing about Craigslist is that you can look, for example, in Craigslist and you can find in Oahu and you can go and do the transaction right there, right? Another thing about shopping like that locally is kind of the same hybrid model because you can go there, look at the good, you know, make sure it's still there. You can call, you can contact the owner, you go check it out, you pay and you're out of there with the goodie and it's cheaper, right? is cheaper. So when you're thinking consumer to consumer, you usually get something cheaper than when you're going into the business, uh, business to consumer method. 
So now what I'm going to be covering is I want you to go, uh, I'm going to show you about some things that you have to watch out when you're shopping online to stay safe. Let's see. So please shop safely. And um, one important thing that I want to tell you is that shopping online is safer than shopping in person. This is something that my students always find fascinating. How can that be uh, safer. I mean, when I'm in person, I can just give the credit card and it's charged right in there. Yeah, but the problem is that many times, you know, um, people scout uh, waiters and, and employees from stores to scan the cards, not just where they have to, but in a little machine that they can carry in their apron or stuff like that. So they can, they can scan that, they can scan it in the other one, and your information will be compromised right away. Now, uh, you can actually, instead of that, just go and pay at the cashier, which is easier. You know, or, you know, maybe we should follow the model that they do in Europe. In Europe, when you pay at a, at a restaurant, they don't take your credit card. When you show them your credit card, they come with a little machine, the scanner, and then they scan the credit card right in front of you, and they give it back to you right up. So they are very mindful about, you know, being safe. So we probably should follow that model. Okay, let's continue. So another thing that you really need to keep in mind is that we don't want you to use computers, uh, public computers, to shop online. Things about this uh, include that, uh, well, the problem is that when you don't own the computer, uh, you don't know what security patches are in there, if there is any maintenance being done, or if somebody actually put a bug in there to capture everything that you are typing in. So please don't do that. <clears throat> Even if you are at a Starbucks, you know, you have to be uh, careful of which network you log in. Uh, as, a, as a general rule, just don't do it. If you need to shop online, do it from home or use your cell phone as a hotspot. That's what I usually do when I'm at Starbucks, I feel like shopping, then do not ever use public networks for shopping. Okay, let's continue. So another thing is that not just your side about using, you know, the kind of equipment and network, but also you have to check out where you are actually shopping, right? So you're gonna review the return policy of them so you know that if, if anything goes wrong with an item, you will be able to return it, okay? Very important, check the URL of, your, of the website where you're purchasing something. Don't just guide yourself by whatever it is that you see in the screen. Your, the URL should begin with HTTPS. S stands for secure, so basically it's HTTP secure. It's encrypted and it's safer. Another thing that you need to look is for the closed padlock at the bottom of the, um, of the browser, you know? And sometimes it's also you know, some, some things, you know, that you have to look into, but those are the main two things, the HTTPS and the closed uh, padlock. Another thing that may sound counterintuitive, you know, when I'm telling you that you have to watch out for your security and your safety is that you need to pay with a credit card. When you pay with credit card, it's actually very good because banks and financial institutions back you up. So if anybody steals your information or something goes wrong, somebody is gonna back you up, is gonna rescue you, right? So credit cards are, even though sometimes you're iffy about them, they are still the best mode of payment because it really, really can keep you safe. Okay, let's continue. So there are several online payment options. The first one, as we just mentioned right now, is the credit card, that's the most widely used, okay? Then you have the e-cash or digital cash. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of this. We have wallet.google, uh, you know, from Google, and we have PayPal, okay? Now, PayPal has been out there for a number of years because I've had my PayPal account for a long time. They began by just having a credit card and they will, you use PayPal and they will uh, charge to your credit card. In a way that's kind of cool because it gives you a certain degree of anonymity, okay? Uh, later on, you know, they expanded the service and now they just don't just use your credit card but you can actually pay with your checking. So if you don't have a credit card, you can still have a PayPal account because they will actually get, uh, you know, stuff from the money, they will deduct the money from your checking account. Now that we have seen this, let's take a look, a really quick look at what cloud computing is. Okay, 
So here is the definition of cloud computing, and this definition is actually, I just uh, took it from Wikipedia, so I gave them credit. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you in a few words what that is. Cloud computing is basically, we think of it as the cloud because we think like uploading stuff, that's why it sort of goes up to the cloud, but no guys, it's just a simple computer, some server or group of servers that are actually storing our information. So whenever I save something to the cloud, it just goes out there, stored in there, and then if I need to, to get something, I just get it from there. Okay, so it seems fast, and but remember, it has to be convenient, but it also has to be safe. Okay, you have to have that cloud secure. So let's take a look at the different kinds of clouds. We have three kinds of clouds. We have public, private, or hybrid, okay? So if you have a public cloud, it's probably not a good idea to store sensitive information in there because a lot of people will be able to access it without any credentials, okay? If you have something private, it's usually for companies or places like Leeward, you know, or, or the UH where they have servers and it's just for people that work or study here, okay? And then you have the hybrid model, which is kind of good because then you have that corporate part of the network, but if you need more resources, then you get some public stuff and you add to that. So you can have the sensitive information within your company server and then something that is not so sensitive but you want other people to be able to access in your, in your private part of your network, okay? So that's it, with, we're done with cloud computing.